Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to my brand new holiday series, Building a Christmas Loco. So, as you can see, the festivities have already begun here on the channel, and I thought it would be a bit of fun to have a go at building a Christmas-themed loco that I could run on my layout. And so, the general premise of this series is that over the next few weeks, I'm going to take a very simple loco and gradually make it a bit more festive. I really want to be ambitious with this series and try something that I've never done before and so in order to do that I need to start off small, start off simple, so let's take a look at the loco that I'm going to use. So it's this, the Humble Hornby 040 and this is actually the Collectors Club model from quite a few years ago. Now. I wasn't a member of the club back then, I just got this particular loco on eBay for quite cheap, less than £10 I think. And the reason I wanted such a cheap loco is because I'm really going to be pulling it apart and messing about with it, so obviously I didn't want to do that with one of my more super detailed expensive models. And so today we're going to be focusing on doing all of the electrics for this project. So the first thing to do is going to be converting it to DCC. After that I'm going to add a few more bells and whistles as well, well not actual bells and whistles, but it's not far off really, so stick around to the end of the video and you'll see what I mean. But for now, let's get this little Hornby 040 converted to DCC. So welcome to the workbench, and the first step here is to dismantle the loco. Essentially it's made up of three main parts, the first being the actual body shell. To get this off, there are two plastic clips underneath the cab. With a bit of manoeuvring, these can be released and the body comes away. And now we can see the inside of the loco, including the motor. Around the edge is this metal running plate, which is what gives the loco a lot of its weight. Again, this is held in by two clips, so I can remove this too just to give myself better access to the chassis and the electronics. And now I'm down to the real bare bones of the loco, and we can see just how simple these Hornby Railroad 040s are. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the motor, and I'll do this by taking off the metal wire clip that's holding it in place. There's a little black cover here from the back of the motor too, which I'll have to put back on later. And with that off, I can now pull the motor carefully away from the chassis. Before I do anything else, I need to unsolder two wires on the bottom of the motor that connect to the pickups. And with that done, the motor is completely disconnected from the loco, and I'll also take off the bent metal wire that holds the motor to the chassis. I'm going to unsolder all the capacitors too, as technically you don't need these when you add a DCC decoder to a loco. Now, usually I just leave them in place because it doesn't really matter, but this time I am removing them because I need all the space I can get in this tiny loco. So with the motor released from the loco, it's time to prepare the DCC decoder. This is a Zimo MX600, and the reason I'm using this is literally because I just happen to have a spare one lying around. <laughs> a smaller decoder may have been easier to fit in, but this one is fairly thin, so hopefully it'll still work. I removed the 8-pin plug from the end of the wires, and then using a knife I just stripped the ends of the ones I needed to wire up to the motor. If you've seen my recent video on hardwiring a Hornby J94, then this next bit will seem very familiar. With the motor held in place, I soldered the grey and orange wires from the decoder to the tabs on the bottom. And then I soldered the red and black wires on the decoder to the two pickup wires on the loco. And this essentially means that I've now interrupted the flow of power, so now it comes into the loco through the pickups and then onto the decoder before it reaches the motor. 
I'm also going to add some captain tape to the bottom of the motor too. The Hornby 040s have a little contact strip for the pickups which the motor sits on when it's in place. Now, this is great for getting a more reliable contact when the Loco is on analog power, but in this instance it would just end up bypassing the decoder. Some people like to snip off the little contact strips inside the chassis. I'm doing something a little less drastic, so the layer of captain tape around the bottom of the motor will just insulate it. And I'll add some tape around the solder joints on the wires too. This will just protect them and stop them from shorting out on anything like the metal footplate, for example. Now, before I go any further, I want to test that this first stage has definitely worked. So I'll put the motor back into the Loco chassis and in a moment we'll give it a test run. With the Hornby 040 on the rolling road and hooked up to DCC power, I can now test to see if it'll run properly. And we have movement, so that seems like it has been a success. Now I haven't changed any settings on the decoder yet either, so everything is still set to the default, but you can see that we are getting some nice smooth slow speed from this loco. In the past, the Hornby 040s were jokingly named Pocket Rockets due to how fast they ran, but it does seem like in the past decade Hornby have addressed this issue. This particular loco was a pretty good runner on analog power, and on DCC that slow speed has become even more controlled, which is fantastic for something so basic. So now I have the loco running on DCC power, but this is just the first step of many. So now that the decoder is all wired up and we know that the Loco still runs really well on DCC, we can start to have a bit of fun. Now this particular decoder, like a lot of them out there these days, gives us the ability of controlling a few different functions on the Loco. And what people often like to do with this is to add lights. Well, seeing as it's Christmas, we've got to have some light on the Loco, haven't we? And seeing as it is a steam engine, I thought where better to start than to add a tiny flickering LED into the cab to create the effect of a firebox glow. So to get the firebox flicker effect, I'm going to use this tiny LED that I got from YouTube's, which also comes with a resistor and some heat shrink. Now getting this wired in is actually going to be a fairly simple process. First I'll take the LED's blue wire and solder this to the resistor. I'll then slide the heat shrink over the resistor and the blue wire so that it's in place for later on. And now I need to solder the other end of the resistor to the blue wire on the decoder. And this essentially gives me my common return for the LED. Next, I'll take the orange wire from the LED and solder this to the brown wire on the decoder, which acts as an output for function 2. And that's all the soldering and wiring done, but now I have to set it up on my controller to get it working. Now I use the Rocco Z21 for running my DCC layouts and I control everything using my smartphone which means that I can now share my screen with you. So I'll head into vehicles and scroll all the way to the bottom where the new loco is. And in here it's automatically on the function page so I'll just tap to set up a new function. And in the shortcut up here I'll name this firebox. I'm going to leave this function set as a switch and now I'll look for an icon for this. And if I scroll down a bit, yeah, there's a nice firebox icon which will make it easy to identify. And then finally I'll set the function number to 2 and that's because if you remember earlier I soldered the LED to the brown wire which is the output for function 2 on the decoder. So with that done I can now use the test button at the bottom to check if that's worked. And if you look at the LED now, yeah you can see it's switching on and off again. It's a little bit hard to see at the moment, but it'll become a bit more apparent when it's inside the cab on the finished loco. Going back to the function page, I'm just going to create an overall control for the lights. I don't actually think I'll need this, but I'm going to set it up just in case I do end up needing it for some reason further down the road. So again, it's the same process of naming the function and then selecting an icon. 
Now if I go into the steering page on the app, you can see that it loads up the loco and on the right we have our two functions and on the left is the speed control. And as you can see, the engine still works, which is good. If I switch the firebox on though, you can see that while the LED comes on, it is just a static light and as it's meant to be fire, I really want this to flicker. For that, I'm going to need to change some CV settings, so I'll come back out to the main page and tap on CV programming. Now generally I go to the manual tab for this on the right and then I'll also select program track since the rolling road is currently connected to the programming track output on the Z21. If I read CV1 which is the Loco's DCC address you'll see that it comes back as 3 which is the default for a new decoder so that is exactly what I wanted to see. To get the firebox to flicker I'm going to go to CV33 and I'll change the value here at the bottom to 8 and then press set CV. Next I'll move up one to CV34 and you can see that CV value disappears and so I'll set the value to 8 here as well and set CV. Finally I'm going to jump all the way up to CV128 and I'm also going to set the value here to 8 as well. And just like that you can see that the tiny LED is now flickering just like a fire. Now I have to admit I don't know how or why this works, I just followed someone else's advice on how to do this for a Zimo decoder. Needless to say, this process may be completely different if you're using another type of decoder or a different DCC controller, so I wouldn't consider this a tutorial so much, it's just how I personally got it to work. Anyway, back in the steering page, you can see that the loco runs and the LED is still flickering, and I can control this individually too, so I can switch it on or off regardless of whether the loco is moving or not. So another big success here, and I think this will add a lot to the loco when it's complete. Great, so everything is really starting to come together. We've got the loco working on DCC, and we've also got a firebox flicker working as well. And believe me, I think that will look a lot better when it's actually installed into the cab. Now though, I really wanna kick things up a notch and do something ambitious, and that is to add a smoke generator. Yep, this should be a really cool effect, but adding a smoke generator into a tiny loco like this is gonna be a real challenge. But I think I'm up for it, so let's give it a go. So this is the smoke generator I'm using. It's a Sooth smoke generator. I hope I'm saying that right. And as you can see, it's pretty small. So I'm hoping this means it won't take up too much space in the loco. Like installing the firebox LED, this is really gonna be a process of soldering the two wires to the outputs on the decoder. First I'll solder the yellow wire on the generator to the green wire on the Zimo decoder and this means it should be controlled by function 1. Next I need to solder the brown wire to the blue common return on the decoder and this is the same wire that the LED is connected to as well. You can see here that in trying to do this I accidentally unsoldered the LED's wire and the resistor so what I ended up doing was twisting the ends of the blue and brown wires together and then soldering this back to the resistor. It took me a minute or so to get it right, but I did get there in the end, and hopefully that is all of the soldering done, so now I can test out the smoke generator. To do this, I'm just going to put it roughly in place on the loco, and fix it down with some black tack. If you've never used black tack before, well, essentially it's just like industrial grade blue tack. It works in exactly the same way, but it's a bit tackier, which makes it a bit stronger. And then we'll just get the rolling road back out again. And with the smoke generator fixed down roughly at the front of the loco, it's now time to add some smoke fluid to make it work. The Sooth generator actually came with a bottle of smoke fluid and this needle, which you do definitely need to get the fluid into the reservoir. With the cap unscrewed, I then used a needle to draw up a tiny amount of fluid. Sooth say you only need 3mm at most, so it really is hardly anything at all. And then with the fluid in the needle, it's time to very carefully add this to the smoke generator. And I really did need to be careful here because I didn't want to damage the heating element, which is really delicate, so a fine needle like this is definitely a must-have. With the generator filled up, it's now time to set up the function on the decoder and the Z21. Again, I go into the vehicle section and then I scroll down until I find the new loco. You can see this is the same one because it has that firebox function I set up earlier. I'll create another new function and this time I'll label it as smoke. 
Again, I'll leave this as a switch. And then for the icon, I can scroll down until... Yeah, there we go, Steam. That is what I'm looking for. Finally, I'll just set the function output as number one. And so with that set up, now it's time to test it out. I press the test button at the bottom here, and it'll take a moment for the generator to heat up, but hopefully soon... And there we go, it's burst into life. This is actually a really cool effect. I don't think I was expecting so much smoke from such a tiny generator, but I am pleasantly surprised. For once, I'm pleased to say that something I've made is actually meant to be smoking, and it's not thanks to my dodgy wiring. Now, I know smoke generators aren't anything new, but I don't think I've ever seen one installed in a basic Hornby 040 like this, so this is going to look really awesome when the whole thing is finished. Even without the body on and all the wiring exposed, I can already start to see how this will add so much more character to the Loco, and I just can't wait to get it finished now. Amazing. I am so pleased with how that looks, and I think it's going to look absolutely incredible when the Loco is finished. Of course, the big question is going to be, will all these new electronics still fit inside the Loco when we try and put it all back together? It's a big question, but I think for today, that's where we're going to leave things. Here's a little preview, though, of what's coming up next week. I have a go at giving the outside of the Loco a Christmas livery. And I tackle the problem of reassembling the entire loco. 